Hello everyone. If you have worked with Azure text to speech models before, you know it's pretty good for basic stuff. And let's be honest, it sounds a little bit robotic. There are no emotions or the real feelings. And then the better version is the real time models, which are Azure OpenAI real time models. Those are much better for a real time conversation because they use voice to voice responses and they sound very natural and quick. But here's the catch. You can't really customize them much. So if you want to use a custom voice with them or how fast the AI should speak, those customizations are not available. I have created multiple projects and I have faced those challenges. Now, if you want to make your application much smarter, for example, you want to use RAG for knowledge retrieval or you want to use an avatar. For example, you have an application which provides English tutoring and you need it to be more interactive and you want to use an avatar, using an avatar with the real time model, it's not easy. It requires a lot of customization, a lot of things has to be done because the lip sync works well with text to speech and speech to text model, but not with real time API. Now, when you have a lot of customization or your project is complex, this becomes a nightmare and there comes the Azure Voice Live API. So in the start of the month, Voice Live API was released during the Microsoft Build 2025. It's a fully managed service. Everything you need from emotions, voice customization, RAG, avatar, as well as integrating with the different services in Azure, it's all possible now. And no more patchwork, no more customization, no more endless scripts or using the API. It will be done through a single API itself. So now let's understand about Azure Voice Live API and how it's changing the game. So as I have already explained, it's a Microsoft managed service which provides real time end to end voice interaction. Now you just connect it once through its endpoint API, which is Voice Live API. And either you can use the enter ID authentication or you can use the API keys to connect to it. It takes care of text to speech, speech to text, using the real time models, transcription, everything. And you get the speech along with the avatar if you're using the avatar with the lip sync. And the best part is the Microsoft managing everything for you. So no more scaling, no more maintenance, no more connecting them together. It's all in one pipeline and you can use it. So now on your screen, you can see the different supported models for Azure Live Voice API. The GPT-40 real time model, GPT-40, 4.1, the mini models as well and the nano model as well as the five models also so and these are divided into three different tiers pro basic and light tier so the pro is used for the premium assistant and it provides the high quality and it has more cost if we'll talk about the basic one which are the mini models so if your application is attending a lot of multiple calls and you are a bit price sensitive in that case this model will work for you and it's a good mix of speed and the cost. And the last one is the nano model, which you can use for the simple bots or the IoT devices. So it's lower cost, smallest models, and the quality will not be that good as you expect from the real-time models. Till now, the real-time models were available only in the two regions, East US2 and the Sweden Central. Now using the Voice Live API, you can use it in a different region like West US2, East US2, Central India, Southeast Asia and the Sweden Central. For East US2 and Sweden Central, there is a full support because you are using the real time models. And for the compliance, HIPAA compliance or the GDPR compliance, these are the two locations. Because if you'll use Central India, it may offload your data to Sweden Central. However, in the case of Asia Pacific, it fully runs local. So now using the voice API, you can decide which region to use based on your compliance. However, if you are directly using the real time models, in that case, you have only two regions, East US2 as well as Sweden Central for now. Now let's talk about the different features which are available and compare them with the text to speech model, real time model and the voice live API. So one round speech in speech out. Yeah, it's not available because first you have to convert from speech to text and text to speech. And these are kind of a separate calls. However, this works in the real time API because it's a speech to speech model and the same with voice live API. End to end low latency conversation. This is not possible in the case of text to speech and speech to text because when you speak, the, you will not get the answer immediately. There is a little bit of latency in there. However, 
the real time api they are pretty good same with the voice live api because in the back end it uses the real time api only built in noise suppression and echo cancellation it's not available in tts not available in real time but it's available in voice api and this is really a very useful feature i have created multiple applications for open ai real time api and the main challenge was if you are sitting in a group and you are talking to the api or you are on the call and you are talking to the real time api and if there is a slightly little bit of noise background noise the model stops immediately and start listening to the background voice and that creates a lot of issues because then we have to customize it that it should not react immediately and in some cases it was not even reacting where it should be interrupted so now this has been taken care in azure voice live api semantic voice activity detection turn detection so turn detection was available in the real time api it's it's not available in tts however it's the advanced version because in the basic one it, it's the voice activity detection server vad which is available however in the voice live api it's the azure semantic vad which means now it checks whether the conversation is complete or not based on the words which uh, the user is speaking uh, it can do the partial transcript streaming uh, the transcription of the ai talking or the user talking uh, so this both of these things are available now it supports 600 plus microsoft voices this was available in tts but not in real time api there were only three voices in azure open ai real time api echo alloy and i forgot the third one but there were only three so no customization no personal voice or no custom voices now you can get 600 plus voices as well as you can customize your own voice itself but for that you can't use the lab account or the credit account you need to have an organization account because this can lead to identity imitation so that's why um, you need to have a company registered then you have to provide the documentation then you have to define why you want this and then it will be approved custom lexicon and the phrase list so this was not available in the real time api if you are using the technical jargons or some brand names or something so it's understanding them correctly however in the case of the real time api it was not understanding the technical jar jargons it understand the normal english and all and if you're using the brand name it takes it as wrong and transcribe it in another way which changes the whole conversation speaking rate and voice tuning this is also not available in the real time api however now you can tune it how fast or slow it should respond and you can tune the voice also avatar output this isn't available in uh, tts classic as well as the real time however lip sync option is available with the voice api now you will have the real time conversation using the real time models but there will be an avatar which will do the lip sync for you and then your application becomes more interactive function calling so there is a limited function calling because azure open ai has its own function calling which is limited but now using the voice live api you can use the open ai function calling as well as the azure function calling custom voices it was not available in the real time however in the voice api you can create your own custom voice but you need to get it approved from the microsoft so that it can be enabled one api to manage everything not in the case of tts and sts because there are two different apis in the case of the real time it's partial but if you have to add rag or function calling in that case you need to add more apis however in the voice live api you can use your own agents and have everything integrated to a single api engineering complexity you have to do all the manual task out of the box in the case of the real time also you have to define everything in the code uh, however in the voice live api you define everything in azure ai foundry create your own agents and then use your agents in voice live api and the pricing of course it's fully managed so it will have more prices but uh, if you'll compare number of the features it's pretty decent so now let's talk about the pricing so there are three different tiers as i've already explained pro basic and light and the pricing works based on text input output audio input output for the native llm as well as text to speech and speech to text audio input output and there are additional fees if you want to do the voice training voice hosting as well as avatar training and the avatar hosting so these are the charges for that 
So now I have done some calculation based on the information provided on the Microsoft website as well as little bit of testing from my end. So one minute call token where there is a big system message. So based on how many tokens will be, so text tokens will be 1600, text output token 1200, audio native input. So if the user is talking, that is 600 tokens. And when the AI is talking and providing response in detail, 1200 tokens. Based on it, per minute call, it costs $0.16. This, this is US dollars. 0 0.03, which is for the basic plan. And for the light, it's very cheap. But if you want a better performance, of course, you will go for the Pro. However, most of the things can be handled easily by the basic because it uses the mini real-time API. So now we have understood about the voice live API. And now let's check how you can use it using the Azure AI Foundry. I am logged into Azure portal now. And let's start with the creation of Azure AI Foundry. Let's go to Azure AI Foundry and create a new one. Test Voice API. So I'll use the East US2 and I'll just leave it as default. Next, next, everything default. And once the validation is done, I'll just create it. So validation is successful now. I'll just create it. I'll pause the video and we'll be back once AI Foundry is deployed. Deployment is successful now. And let's open the Azure Foundry portal. Now the hub as well as the project is created. So previously what we used to do was go to the models, deploy the models. But in this case, we are not going to deploy the model. We are going to use the voice live API directly. And for that, let's go to playgrounds. And in the playground, go to speech playground. And there are multiple options which are available. Just scroll to the right and there is voice live. Click here. And if you click here, you can find the documentation, which is Azure documentation, providing all the details, how you can quick start, how to use it and everything. So now if you'll come here, there are multiple models which are available. GPT-40 real time, mini, 40, 40 mini, and bring my agent. So now this is the system message and you can use it for customer service, casual chat, or start from blank. So you can set up anything you want. Now this is the response temperature, which means how random responses do you want? So if you'll reduce it, the AI will provide the information which it has on certainty. It will provide the repetitive answers, kind of repetitive way, However, if you'll increase the response temperature, every time it will be more creative and provide you with a creative response. Another one is the proactive engagement. There are two uses of it. One is, for example, you're calling a customer service and you expect the customer service to speak first. Like, hello, I am this assistant from the customer service. In that case, you need proactive engagement. Another one is, if in case you are doing a conversation, for example, the language learning on the left side, if you click here, language learning, in that case, you need the proactive engagement. If you are stuck and there is a silence, then automatically AI should pitch in and correct it or just keep going with the conversation. So that is really important. Now, if we'll go to the speech, there are multiple languages which are supported. You can go to any language from here. So I'll just auto detect, which is English or in English. Also, there are multiple different country languages you can use. And then based on it, you can use the voice, which can speak. For example, here it has picked up the German language and it's male, confident voice, casual, warm. So you can select based on it. There are 600 different voices which are present. So voice temperature also similar to the response temperature. So how random responses do you want? 
so you can control from here and the speaking rate should it speak faster slower based on it you can change it based on a requirement now the voice activity detection basic server wad is default for real time apis where it will understand the interruption however the azure semantic wad it's a better version so because it's using the semantic approach in between so if you are speaking and you took a pause however your sentence is not complete then it will wait for you to complete the sentence however in the case of the basic once you will take a pause the ai will start speaking that's why azure semantic wad is better than uh, the basic wad now audio enhancements there are two options which are available one is noise suppression echo cancellation and these are really good if there is a echo it takes care of that if there is noise background noise it will take care of that too and another best part is using the avatars so if we'll just enable the avatar you can choose the avatar because we have chosen a male voice so let's choose a male avatar however you can create your own custom avatar the only problem is it's not enabled by default and you need to provide specific documentation to get this enabled so i'll just apply it and i can see the avatar here and if i'll start the conversation i'll just reduce the size of the screen yep your friendly travel agent i'm here to help you plan your next adventure whether it's a relaxing beach holiday or an exciting city escape where are you thinking of going and what kind of experience are you looking for hey andrew i'm planning to visit to india that's fantastic india is a diverse and vibrant country with so now as you can see uh, we have done the conversation i got the transcription also here the transcription is very important in the case where you are using the ai as a customer service agent because when the real customers will be calling in that case you want to have a summary or you want to have the output or the status what happened to that call so based on the transcription you can determine whether the call was successful what happened in that call and all those can be taken care now another thing which you can do is you click here view code and perfect you get the python code you can deploy it in your environment and use it now there is endpoint as well as the resource key and the region which is provided provide all those details in here and and you can deploy the same thing into your own environment and there are two ways in which you can do the authentication either the enter id or using the resource key and it's mentioned that for using the resource key it's highly recommended to use the azure key vault so to summarize this video we have learned about azure voice live api which is recently released in microsoft build 2025 it's a game changing voice agent where you can deploy multiple application connected to your phone numbers act as a customer service or a learning tutor and it provides us the endless opportunities how it can be used best thing is that it's completely managed by azure so you don't have to manage the underlying infrastructure you just have to use the single endpoint and most of the things will be taken care in the background another thing which i forgot to inform you if you close this quickly go here there is an option of bring my agent so right now there is no agent deployed but if we'll go to agents and you have to have a voice agent deployed in that case you can first deploy the model create a agent you can check my previous videos how you create an agent how you can connect it with the different tools for rag as well as uh, function calling and logic apps so once you have the agent ready you can bring your own agent and connect it with your voice api which means now all the function calling all the logic apps all the power automate everything can be brought into this without doing much customization and everything you can do is through the portal and finally you get a code you deploy it in your environment and run it so that's all i wanted to explain in this video i hope you liked it please like and subscribe thank you so much